In this 10-year anniversary edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be taking a look at Nintendo's Color TV Game 6. If you're interested in seeing my original video about it, I have the link to it in the description for this video. And in that one, uh, the original video, I did do a kind of mini unboxing of the TV Game 6, but the main focus of that video was to demonstrate some gameplay, which I will not be doing in this unboxing. So you might want to actually check out the original video. But the reason I'm starting uh, the 10-year anniversary off with the Color TV Game 6 is because I kind of want to start at the beginning. As you can see, we've got a copyright of 1977 by Nintendo. And uh, this is one of the earliest video games that Nintendo produced. You may be aware that Nintendo as a company has existed since the 1800s, but they then progressed uh, through various different business ventures and then to toys and eventually to video games. So this is one of their first forays into the video game market, a Pong console clone that was available only in Japan. These were never really released in other territories. So we're going to see lots of Japanese here, uh, and since this is uh, kind of sports oriented, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, katakana, the, uh, ca the set of characters in the Japanese alphabet for borrowed words. Many borrowed words uh, come from technology uh, and sports, and uh, those are the original English. So I'm going to try to read the ones uh, that I can. So right off the bat here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six images of the types of games that you can play here. We've got somebody with their hands up. And as I uh, read this, it, it looks like it says um, Barre. Barre. And I know there's like a volleyball game, so I'm assuming that this is kind of an abbreviation for volleyball. Volley or Barre. And it looks like in each of these there's one person and two people. So we've got singles and doubles most likely. And then as we go down here, this I can read in uh, katakana tenisu. So that's obviously tennis. And then here we've got hoke, which is obviously hockey. So uh, the reason the name here is Color TV Game 6 is because of the six different games, which actually it's three, because uh, they're padding that number there with the singles and doubles variants of the games that you can play. So really three. We've got volleyball, tennis, and hockey. Uh, and we've got a little bit of a diagram here of the, or an illustration of the unit itself, and then a, uh, another illustration of the TV screen, the gameplay that you might see. But this is nothing more than a Pong console clone. On this panel, we've got Kara, so that means color. Color Terebi Gemu, Color TV Game 6. And there is the part number. And we've already seen the copyright of 1977. There were several of these uh, Pong uh, console clones made by Nintendo, I think, uh, from 1977 to 1979. Some of them came with uh, detachable controllers for two-player. But as this one, we can see the uh, knobs for uh, moving your paddles. They are relegated to one unit, so you would kind of have to share this between uh, you and the other player. And then it's showing you the other thing included in the package here is the RF switch that you would need for connecting it to a TV, which at that time was a CRT. Old-fashioned TV. On this uh, short panel here, we've got a uh, text list of the games here. So, Color TV Game 6, and then again the two variations of volleyball, tennis, and then hockey. And then we've got repetitions of those things on the other two panels. So let's crack open the lid and see what we have. Met with some documentation here, and then the unit itself along with the RF connection. Let's take a look at the paperwork that we have in the bag. Looks like we have a little bit of a registration card here. A lot of times I think you would put down the, uh, the telephone number of the store that you bought it from in case you had to call for help. And we've got the kanji there for Nintendo. But much of this I cannot read, other than the katakana. I do get some practice with katakana for borrowed words. So here we've got the manual. Very nice monochromatic brown and white. Lots of text, of course, but then 
kind of a monochromatic photo. Photo of the unit itself, but then an illustration or a diagram of the RF switch. Now, RF stands for radio frequency. What that does is it broadcasts over a particular TV channel. So as a consequence, you do not get very clear uh, video signal or audio signal. And the audio signal is mono. There is no stereo sound. However, with this particular unit, you're not getting music. You're just getting some electronic bleeps and bloops for the ball hitting the paddle and such. But we'll take a look at that RF switch. It's quite a monstrosity of an RF switch. So lots of uh, instructions here, text instructions, talking a little bit about the geometry of how to make the uh, ball bounce off your paddle in a certain way. Lots more diagrams about how to hook these things up and how to insert the uh, 6C batteries that you would need to run it. I think it's 6C. We'll actually confirm that once we open up the uh, battery compartment. But t CRT TVs back in the day, especially older ones, they may not have had uh, any inputs other than two screws on the back for VHF. A particular type of signal I believe and this RF switch uh, comes equipped to uh, connect to those screws but they did also provide an adapter if you had the uh, the kind of screw on co uh, coaxial connection as well so you could uh, hook it up via VHF and um, broadcast through that input on your TV Getting a little bit into more of the gameplay here. We've got the volleyball, the tennis, and the hockey, which they look really similar, don't they? They already padded the number of games from three to six just by counting the uh, doubles and singles variation, but I think maybe a more accurate title for the peripheral is TV Game 1. It's really just the same game. The variations do uh, make some impact on the gameplay, though. So on the back, we just got some information probably about warranty. It looks like I'm seeing some phone numbers there, things to call if you need help. So that's the documentation for the Terebi Gemo 6 or Roku. So let's see what we have in the box. We will take a look at the RF switch first because it is interesting and the adapter as well. So this is the RF or radio frequency switch here. And it also has a switch on it as well. Uh, later on, especially when the Nintendo Entertainment System was released in the United States in 1985, that was an auto RF switch. It could detect whether or not it was receiving a signal from the game console and then would just automatically broadcast over the TV channel. This one is manual. You had to tell it if you wanted to be watching TV. You'd switch it over to the antenna or to the game. Um, and a little bit of a note about um, RF signal. In the United States, RF would typically broadcast over either channel 3 or channel 4. And depending on your TV, you would get a better uh, audio video signal uh, on any particular channel. So there was usually at least a switch to choose between channel 3 or channel 4. In uh, Japan, the channels that you would need to broadcast over RF would be channel 1 and channel 2. So if you're trying to use these uh, RF uh, consoles on a CRT TV from the United States, the channels that will typically uh, see the signal from these uh, RF adapters would be channel 95 or channel 96. So you have to find a TV that'll go that high. Not all TVs do go that high, especially, uh, especially uh, if they're older ones. So if we take a look at this, we've got lots more screws on there. I'll be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure about what those screws are for. But this uh, RCA port right here, that is to actually connect the TV Game 6. And I will show you how that works. But in the event that your TV did not have those two little screws on there, they would give you this adapter where you would take a screwdriver and fasten these uh, two little prongs uh, underneath there. And then this adapter may look familiar to you. This you would kind of press on to that threaded RF uh, input on the back of a TV. But there's a couple different ways that you could connect this to a TV, and I'll, I'll show you those uh, once we take a look at the system here. So if we pull the box a little bit closer.
take the TV game six out. And there it is in all of its glory here. Again, the two knobs were your main uh, controller input here, but you would only be using one of them as a player. This was for the second player option here. Like I said, some of the other variations of TV game uh, Pong clone consoles by Nintendo had detachable controllers, so you didn't have to sit quite so closely together. So we got lots of um, different uh, switches here, I think, to toggle between uh, the different games, obviously. This one I can read the, uh, the katakana here. This says, Resetto. So there's your reset button. I believe this is the power, the on and off switch. This says, Bari ho poru teni. Okay, so this is the... Um, this is the game selects. This is Bariboru, so volleyball, tennisu, and hockey. So that's how you select your game. And then the singles and doubles, I believe, are some of these switches here. What else do we got? We've got Bo, Re, Su, Pi, To. Bo, Re, Su, Pi. Oh, wait, no, that's the circle Dakuten. Bo, sorry, I, I want to figure this out. Boru supido. Oh, oh, ball speed. Okay, boru supido. Ball speed. And then we've got daburu su. Okay, those are the doubles and and then the singles. Shinguru su. <laughs> oh, katakana is so much fun. So yeah, we got the ball speed toggling between doubles and singles. The three games you could play reset on and off. In this, I'm not quite sure what that says. That says Raketo Saizu. Oh, racket size. Okay. Raketo Saizu. So that's probably your paddle size to make it more challenging. You can make your uh, paddle a little bit more. Uh, you can make it a little bit smaller. So, got some kanji on there. Got no idea what that means. But um, if you can read katakana, you can figure out what these things mean. Uh, or you could just experiment as well. But if we take a look at uh, the console, nothing on the sides really, except on the back there's the, uh, the RF wire, which we'll take a look at. But on the bottom, we've got stickers with a part number on there, and then the compartment, of course, for the 6C size batteries. So, no power here. This runs uh, only on batteries. So that's why we have only one cable there which is your uh, AV cable. And that audio video signal was piped out using radio frequency on this cable here. Super long cable because this would connect uh, to the RF switch here. Got that RCA kind of port. And then this would connect to your TV using one of those two ways that I explained and that we saw in the instruction manual. But you unfurl this cord and you have several feet of distance between your TV and where you would be sitting ostensibly on the floor. But um, if you're interested in picking one of these up, there's a couple different ways that, uh, that you could hook it up. If yours happens to not include the original manual RF switch, a automatic RF switch like the one that was included with the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or even a Sega Genesis. This would work uh, just the same. The only thing that you would need is an RCA coupler because as you can see here the cables wouldn't be able to connect. So the coupler that you would need looks like this. So you plug one in, in, one in, in here, and then one in, 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 in here, and then this uh, threads on to the coax connection in the back of your TV. Another method of hooking this up to a TV would be using a, an adapter here. This is on an uh, RCA to coax adapter. So this has that uh, threaded cuff on there that would make the RF connection. And there you have the Nintendo Color TV Game 6, released in 1977 in Japan. 
I hope you enjoyed this first edition of the 10-year anniversary of Nintendo Unboxed. Remember, I'm going to be uh, reshooting several of my unboxing videos to improve the quality and aspect ratio on screen. Up on the screen now is the schedule of some of the upcoming videos this year. I will have at least one 10-year anniversary unboxing per month. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll stay tuned for the rest, as well as other content that will be coming at you from World of Nintendo.